World Blood Donor Day is observed with calls on Cameroonians to voluntarily donate blood without expecting remuneration. The country is in dire need of 400,000 pints of blood to save lives, says public health boss. Government launches a public call to savings to raise 150 billion CFA francs through bond loans. Subscribers have from the 13th to the 30th of June to lend to the state money for development projects. Tributes keep pouring in after the demise of Cameroon's iconic opposition leader Neil John Frondi. Politicians and diplomats across the group are amongst the latest to extend their heartfelt condolences to the bereaved family. And those are top stories. Good evening and thanks for joining us on this edition of the 730 News. With me, Gladys Tata. World Blood Donor Day has been celebrated today in Cameroon under the theme Give Blood, Give Plasma, Share Life, Share Often. On the occasion, tents were erected at the Wada Sports Complex here in the nation's capital for voluntary donors to donate blood and fill national needs, estimated at 400,000 pints each year. Public Health Minister Manauda Malashi called on Cameroonians to become voluntary and non-remunerated blood donors to save life. Details with Beatrice Ngom. Blood is a medication indispensable during treatment and its scarcity in hospital can be life-threatening to persons in need. As a medical doctor, I know how uh, blood helps to save life. So I came here to donate voluntary my blood to show the example. And so these blood donors have lived and heard testimonies of men, women and children dying for lack of blood and have yielded to the call from the National Blood Transmission Service to voluntarily donate blood. The population requires about 400,000 units of blood every year. And uh, in 2022, we collected 147,034 pints, about 36% collected. So we still have a huge gap. The voluntary and non-renumerated blood donation campaign is part of activities organized by the National Blood Transfusion Service to celebrate people who have donated blood 15 to 41 times with attestations and to reflect on how to deal with barriers against blood donation. There are lots of myths around blood donation. There are lots of uh, socio-cultural beliefs. We are doing a lot of sensitization and education, which is a good strategy for promoting blood donation. To ensure safe and sufficient blood for all in blood banks nationwide, Cameroonians have been challenged to give a little bit of their blood once in a while. Activities to raise awareness on the importance of donating blood are also taking place at the Chantal Bia Foundation here in Yaoundé, where the vital fluid is essential for the treatment of kids with life-threatening diseases. Unfortunately, 40% of children die due to the lack of blood, according to officials of the foundation. Ayim Bile tells us more. We are in the emergency unit of the Chantal Bia Foundation and with the nurse on duty are two mothers. The babies both have severe anemia and while one is already receiving a blood transfusion, the second is being prepared for the procedure. After checking to ensure that the blood received corresponds to the baby's blood group, the nurse on duty controls the temperature of the blood pint, then takes the temperature of the baby, his breathing and pulse rates as well as his blood pressure. Baby Simon, for his part, we are told, was admitted at 5 a.m. And after almost an hour of an ongoing blood transfusion carefully monitored by the nurse on duty, his mother says her baby is looking stronger. Come on, Sava. Like baby Simon and Simo, many children under five in need of blood transfusions are treated at the Chantal Bia Foundation. It's a combination of iron deficiency in the uh, children's diet coupled with bouts of malaria. Along with malaria and malnutrition, cancers and sickle cell disease are also today leading causes of anemia in children. About 40% of children die from uh, lack of blood when they need it. 
In effect, much needed blood to treat these children with life threatening conditions is not always available. A need which Cameroonians can meet by giving blood to save these young lives. Over in the littoral region, inhabitants of Koto at the Douala 5 council area have been assured of their safety after a wave of looting and attacks on the population said to have been triggered by the murder of a female gendarmerie officer, Janine Jock, this week. Littoral regional governor Samuel Jedoni Vahadibua visited the murder site and called on the population to remain calm as security forces are tracking killers and perpetrators of violence. Gladys Atemban Chechuma Banla comes back to the circumstances surrounding the death of Janine Jock in the following report. It is reported that Major Constable Janine Jock left a snack at Koto 2 a.m. Monday, June 12, 2023 and was heading home when some three men on a bike approached her and seized her bag. She resisted and succeeded to retrieve her bag from the hoodlums but just as she was about to leave, one of the assailants stabbed her in the eye. Some inhabitants of the area came to her rescue and rushed her to the hospital. Unfortunately, she did not survive due to overbleeding. Since this Tuesday morning, information has been circulating that colleagues of the deceased gendarme stormed the Douala 5 Council last night, destroyed properties and got the population mercilessly beaten. This information has, however, been debunked by the governor of the littoral region, Samuel Diodone Ivaha Dibua, who says the presence of forces of law and order in the locality was solely to restore order. He was at the murder scene this Tuesday morning to get first-hand information of what happened. It is not uh, the real situation. All those uh, gendarmes and policemen are working every day to make this uh, city of Douala to, to, to be in a calm mood. This incident has once more exposed the problem of insecurity in Douala. Inhabitants of the area now live in fear and distress. The governor has, however, assured the population that the situation is under control. The 2023 public call to savings through bond loan has been launched with investors urged to make use of the innovation put in place for this year's exercise. The operation was declared open by the minister delegate at the Ministry of Finance, Yaoba Abdullahi, during a press conference. Clarice Aritakan tells us that subscribers have between 13th to 30th of June to lend to the state. The bond issue will be rolled out in four phases with different amounts to raise, varying interest rates and maturity periods. The first two are for 40 billion TF francs each. The exercise is open to investors from the Central African sub-region. The press conference served as platform to launch the start of the operation on the financial markets with the obligations of the state made public, supported by partner banks and brokerage firms of the placement consortium, taking the lead with 104 billion CFA francs. Considering the market conditions, you know, with the rate of inflation, the increase in, bank, in central bank uh, uh, rates, uh, the market has become really difficult. So we moved from 100 to 150. And then now to reach a, a wide range of investors, we had to also diversify the various uh, uh, coupons of the, of, the, of the loan. The bulk of the funds will go into sectors identified as priority for Cameroon's development agenda, included our water and energy, transport, public works, and the reconstruction of crisis-hit regions. We have always met our target, so I don't, I don't think there's any reason why we should not meet the target now. We have a very good signature. We have been in the market since 2010. We have nev never def defaulted. So we have a lot of operations that are in the pipe. So we are very sure that we will meet the target. Subscribers have up to June 30, 2023 to lend to the state with at least 10,000 CFA francs the value of a bond. Production and transformation of bread and other pastries using cassava, potatoes and plantain will soon be possible throughout the country. The Ministry of Youth Affairs and Civic Education is training some 350 youths to pilot this project. Minister Mana, Muna, Mununa Futsu, accompanied by several cabinet members, is supervising the pilot phase of the project here in Yaoundé. As you tell us, Isaac Ngankum. Bread and other pastries made from local flour, yummy. It's time for economic patriotism and the youths are playing the front role. We are trained on using our local material to produce bakery products like bread, 
cookies and other stuff. This is a very big step for us, the youth who are out here trying to strive and support our parents. The training is going on very well. This cohort of 60 participating in the pilot phase of the training workshop have the responsibility of replicating knowledge and expertise gained to their peers in the 10 regions of the country. After this training, we'll uh, install all the uh, 348 young people in all our divisions, uh, six per division, so that they can create transformation unit, bakeries, uh, based on uh, local flowers. The official launching ceremony presided over by the Minister of Youth Affairs and Civic Education witnessed the participation of three other cabinet ministers and development partners. Prominent political figures and the diplomatic community in Yaoundé and elsewhere have been paying glowing tribute and extending condolence messages on social media platforms following the death of Cameroon's emblematic political leader, Nijan Frondi. President Paul Bia, the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mahamat, the US, UK and French embassies have all extended sympathy to the deceased family. Beatrice Lothsamba tells us more. Glowing tribute has been paid to Cameroon's fallen opposition leader from very high quarters. The head of state, President Paul Bia and spouse Chantal, expressed sympathy to the prominent opposition leader's family through his daughter, saying, quote, I would like to pay tribute to the memory of the political figure who was a caring family man and a committed patriot, end of quote. A prominent political figure, the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Mahamat Faki, tweeted, I was saddened to hear of the passing of John Fundi, a leading national political leader in Cameroon, member of the African Union high-level panel on illicit financial flows, Akare Muna paid glowing tribute to a great man whom he had known for five decades, adding that the story of the return of multi-party politics in Cameroon cannot be written without his name in bold gold. He took on Twitter to mention his grief. The UK Cameroon Facebook page messaged that the national chairman of the SDF will be remembered for his historic contributions to multi-party politics in Cameroon, while the US Embassy in Yaoundé acknowledged significant contributions the founder and chairman of the SDF made in promoting multi-party democracy in the country. The French embassy describes John Frundi as a vibrant defender of multi-partism and fervent advocate of peace in the northwest and southwest regions. Political leaders have poured their hearts in messages on social media. Kilian Dandy for an exceptional class senior journalist to talk about some of the outstanding qualities of the late national president of the Social Democratic Front, Nijan Fundi. Good evening, Kilian. Good evening to you, Gladys. Good evening to all our viewers. Let's begin by looking at Nijan Fundi as a statesman. Yes, uh, Gladys Williams Shakespeare acclaimed over the centuries as the greatest English writer says in Julius Caesar, one of his most popular plays, I come to bury Caesar, not to mourn him. The evil that men do leaves after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. We are on this set today to press Ni John Frundi, late Social Democratic Front, SDF National Chairman, because he did no evil and his good will not be buried with his bones. Gladys, did you ask me to talk about Nijon Frundi as a statesman? Yes, he is beyond that. The chairman, as he was fondly called even by the president of the republic, was a statesman, astute politician, peacemaker, respecter of republican institutions, and an outstanding patriot. As a statesman, Nijon Frundi was a virtuous man with a high sense of justice and wisdom. This explains why he was a socialist democratic uh, person preaching by example the philosophy of the greatest good for the greatest majority. As a statesman, Chairman Frundi incarnated dignity, generosity, magnanimity. He commanded respect from the conception of his ideas to uh, their verbal and gestural expression. 
This earned him VIP invitations, receptions, and treatment in national and international events. The President of the Republic of Cameroon, His Excellency Paul Bia, has been one of the first personalities officially to express regret on his demise and to send condolence message to the bereaved family. Three out of the five permanent members of the United Nations Organization, the United States of America, Great Britain and uh, France have equally also officially expressed messages of condolence. We don't need to belabor his generosity and magnanimity, which is a public testimony. We, but we can not fail here, Gladys, to highlight that as a statesman, Lee John Frundi never changed his political beliefs in a quest for any political career. It is widely reported that he refused on several consultations to join the government. That does not validate his social democracy agenda, but allowed his party members to hold positions of responsibility in government as citizens of the Republic. They are also in Parliament. That is National Assembly and the Senate. Gladys. Yes, uh, Kilian, if I may ask, Frundi has also been described across the board as a courageous, astute politician and peacemaker. That is unlike other politicians in the opposition who stay their course. Yes, Gladys, it is common knowledge that the SDF was created in May 26, 1990, against all odds. And two years later, in 1992, President Shaw election, the results were too close to call. With a small margin of 200,000 voters between President Paul Beer for the CPDM and Frundi for the SDF. The percentages were 39.8 against 35.9. Frundi was a courageous man since then until recently in 2018 with the socio political crisis in the Northwest and Southwest regions of Cameroon. With a different candidate for his party, Frundi has been the second consistent political force and the leading opposition party leader in Cameroon. With the march and stick in hand, Chairman Frundi, as a peacemaker, refused to light the fire of war in Cameroon. He lit a candle to light the path other or political parties should follow. Kidnapped in 2019 and 2021, and manhandled by the separatist fighters he maintained his ideological and political position that is a united cameroon even if he says a federal united cameroon except one thing he said everything except secession he promised never to walk on the blood of cameroonians this he achieved after audience president paul be granted chairman fundi during the 50th anniversary of the Defense Forces in Bamenda, he declared the stalemate is broken. Dialogue has started. We don't know what has happened between and behind the curtains since then. But we have seen the two statesmen in their best of moves at the Agro Pastoral Show in the Bolivar in 2011 and during national events, 20th May Boulevard and the Unity Palace. From the corridors of the opposition, Chairman Frundi, for 33 years and above, worked for the unity of Cameroon. He uncompromisingly pushed for accountability in the public office and he fought to change power at the helm of state from the ballot box. Frundi, Chairman Frundi was a patriot. Yes, to conclude, Kilian, uh, are there any special lessons that we can learn from Jenny John Frundi's uh, example? Uh, of course, uh, Gladys, I just said he was a patriot. As a patriot, you don't necessarily have to be in government to show your patriotism. And those are the type of things that John Frundi has taught all of us. John Frundi, in his slogan, Power to the People, have also taught Cameroonians that they have the power to do everything and the power to the people, people of Cameroon, from what is happening today, when you look at it, you know they've learned the lesson. Because we have had people, some political leaders, who have come out outright to call on Cameroonians to revolt against the state. And people have turned that down. I think they understood that they have the power to build Cameroon and not to destroy their country. Fundi has also thought us about 
political fair play where after having lost the close to call elections in 1992 he accepted the verdict although he said there were irregularities and he is an institutionalist he is one who respects the state institutions you know he has never called uh, president Paul Bia Bia as others say he says president Bia he says Mr. Bia which also means that he respects the institutions of state. Fundi and the President of the Republic have shown us that you can have divergent ideas well, on how to build a country, Kilian, uh, but before. you must not. Uh, thank you very much, Kilian, because if we continue, you keep on just saying the good things about uh, Kilian Landifon. <laughs> so maybe next, on the next set, you might be here to tell us thank more you. about the Fundi you know thank you very better. Much. And uh, you, Kilian Da, you are the ex an exceptional class senior journalist. You are just here to talk about Nijon Fundi, who died yesterday here An in Yaoundé. Thank you very much for You're being welcome. here. You're welcome. Okay. It has been observed that security situation in the southwest region has improved tremendously in the recent past, with the defense and security forces working tirelessly. The remark is by the southwest boss, Benau Kalia Bilai, during an administrative and security coordination meeting in Tombel, Kope Manenguba Division. Administrative authorities of the region, defense and security forces and regional delegates held a security meeting in Tombel recently, as we hear in this report, courtesy Charles Abuno from Boya. The peace and tranquility that many people enjoy in the southwest region today is thanks in large part to the huge efforts made by the administration and the defense and security forces for the security situation and peace currently enjoyed by many in the region to further improve there is great need for the population to collaborate even more with the defense and security forces they can always be an explosive somewhere, so we must be vigilant enough to see if there is an abandoned park, if there is a suspect maneuver from somebody, an abandoned car, all those we must report. The importance of further improving the peace and security situation in the southwest region cannot be overemphasized in a context where the government is taking many measures to execute groundbreaking development projects. This include the Limbe Deep Sea Port Project and the Tiko Airport Project. The six SDOs of the Southwest region made presentations on the conduct of state business in their different areas of command. The Economic Affairs Committee of the National Assembly has scrutinized the bill to lay down the general regime of public-private partnership contracts defended by the Minister of the Economy, Planning and Regional Development, Alamin Usman May. The new legal framework was developed using a participating approach between government and its technical and financial partners to meet development needs. Esther Kima has more. The law on the rules and regulations governing public-private partnership contracts in Cameroon did as far back as 2006 and with a recent review of economic and financial policies, there is need to update the framework. The Economic Affairs Committee head, Honorable Theodombe Asai, joined the other members to peruse the 27 section structural changes to the scheme. The government has so far been uh doing uh, the job of uh, financing this operation using a sovereign debt. It's not enough to accelerate our development process. It was important based on our experience, based on uh, international best practices to revise, to innovate, to adapt and to modernize our tool. The amendments will create a paradigm shift in the sector and will extend the scope of public-private partnerships. And so far we have been able to realize uh, around 30 projects uh, based on PPP contracts, amounting to 2,700 uh, billion CFA, but we can do more. The potential is high, the interest for the private sector is there, and the framework needed to be actualized, modernized, and bring in new incentives. This will ensure the smooth conduct of the International Monetary Fund-led economic and financial program with the governments. The outgoing Korean ambassador to Cameroon, Kim jong hyun has been raised to the rank of Grand Officer of the National Order of Valor. The distinction was handed to him last night in Yaoundé by external relations boss Mbelambela and to the head of the European Union delegation to Cameroon, Philip Van Damme. Charles Ebune has more. Estimated at roughly 200 billion CFA francs today, the trade volume between Cameroon and South Korea makes Seoul 
to be Yaoundé's fifth commercial partner. The Asian giant stands out as a key partner in the betterment of the quality of life in Cameroon, especially in the health sector. With the construction of the Yaoundé Emergency Center and a modern hospital in Garoua, estimated singularly at roughly 30 billion CFA francs as clear examples. To honor such a strategic partner, a state dinner is held at the Yaoundé Hilton to officially bid farewell to the outgoing Korean ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary to Cameroon, Kim Jong-un. Attended by at least five cabinet members, including finance, economy, transport, and women empowerment ministers, the ambassador is raised to the rank of grand officer of the National Order of Valor on behalf of the head of state, President Paul Bia, by the Minister of External Relations, Mbilambila. The toast is changed. The Korean ambassador, extraordinary and plenipotentiary to Cameroon, Kim Jong-un, who had spent three years in Cameroon, promised to be an ambassador of the country wherever he goes. The 11th session of the International Labour Conference has begun in Geneva, Switzerland, with delegates from all over the world, including 20 heads of state and governments, participating. The theme of the conference is social justice for all. Cameroon is represented at a high-level conference by the Minister of Labour and Social Security, Gruga Owner. Details with Ewane Pole. The basis of this high-level summit has a common vision focusing on the need for social justice in the world. The summit holding at the Palais des Nations in Geneva, Switzerland, is to mark the way to a world of work where equity reigns supreme. Participants are debating on the strategies to be put in place in order to promote a stronger and better coordinated common action to advance social justice and guarantee policy coherence. This forum mobilizes around 20 head of states and government officials from the four corners of the planet, notably representatives of the United Nations and organizations of employers and workers. To advance social justice, the voice of Cameroon is carried by the representative of the head of state, the Minister of Labor and Social Security, Grégoire Ouna. The two-day proceedings are a platform for consultation to discuss the initiative of the Global Coalition for Social Justice welcomed by the governing body of the International Labour Office during its 347th session in March 2023. A project to revolutionize uh, cocoa production has been launched in Gorom Bangasina, local councils in the BAM and the Kim Division of the Center region. The project called Green Cocoa envisages to improve sustainable cocoa production and ameliorate living condition of production basins across the country. Details once more with Iwane Epole. Agro-produce management services in conjunction with the Sustainable Trade Initiative under the supervision of the Ministry of Agriculture and Road Development, launched the AMS Green Cocoa Project in Dangoro and Bangasina municipalities. We want to help women improve the revenue of the home. So we want to work with about 600 women to create new income generating activities. The AMS Green Cocoa Project is an ECOM IDH sustainability initiative for inclusive development in rural communities. The project aims at supporting sustainable cocoa production as well as the restoration of forest landscape in the areas. As a farmer, we struggle left and right to see how we can have a fertilizer. The ultimate goal is to improve the livelihoods of the people while protecting the forest. This time we are going to bring more knowledge towards them to know that cocoa production is a business. And for that reason, it has attracted attention not only nationwide, international wise. The project will run from the year 2023 to 2025 and it is another move by the agro-produce management services towards improving sustainable cocoa production in the country. Over 4,000 Cameroonians are in Saudi Arabia for this year's pilgrimage. The pilgrims are under the care and guidance of officials of Cameroon's embassy in Saudi Arabia and pilgrim guides. A special envoy to Saudi Arabia, Ngonige Shwabu Shari, has been finding out who the pilgrim guides are and reports that they are trusted men and women. Most of the Cameroonian pilgrims are not only from the hinterlands of the country, but are also visiting the Holy Land for the first time. 
they also have very little or no knowledge of Arabic and English, which are the main languages of communication in Saudi Arabia. This explains why they largely depend on pilgrim guides to facilitate the accomplishment of their Hajj. Our mission begins right in Cameroon with the registration and psychological preparation of pilgrims for the holy trip. While in Saudi Arabia, we take them to the mosque and other places and bring them back to their hotels. The pilgrim guides see their job more as a sacrifice than a money-making venture. It is really not easy for us given that each of them comes with their own mentality and we have to be patient with them. This notwithstanding, pilgrim guides are committed to go the extra mile to meet the aspirations of pilgrims. The current vice president of the Basketball Federation says he will put up a long-term plan in developing youth basketball in Cameroon and beyond. Eric Emeniat was speaking shortly after his election as the new vice president of the FIBA Afrique Zone 4. The mayor of Bagante was triumphantly welcomed in Douala and his municipality in the West Region, as you tell us, Romeo Kenny, in this report. Arriving Douala from Maputo, Mozambique, where he was voted new FIBA Africa Zone 4 president, Eric Emeniat told the public that he will immediately get to work developing basketball in all eight countries that make up Zone 4. The Nzui Mantu Academy Sports President, also Mayor of Bangante, was received as a hero in his municipality, West Region of the country. I'm happy to share my joy with them today. Uh, now it's time to work. For the next four years, the current Vice President of the Cameroon Basketball Federation who also doubles as FIBA Africa Zone 4 president entails making youth basketball a priority in Cameroon and beyond. We now have to work, especially making sure that basketball is being played all around the zone, uh, making sure that uh, we level up all the teams so that they can participate to all the international uh, events. Eric Emeniat, age 49, was elected last June 8th during the 18th FIBA Africa General Assembly. That's how we saw the 7.30 edition this uh, evening. Thanks for watching. You'll be in the company of Adam Bala at 8.30. So why not take the rendezvous tomorrow at 7.30? I'll be on the set, God willing. Until then, it's bye from all of us on the 7.30 crew. Good night.